Building a Hackintosh from scratch, that is, installing Mac OS X on non-Mac hardware, has never been easier. Here's how it works. What you'll need. Before you get started building your Hackintosh, you will, of course, need a few supplies. First, the hardware. There's no such thing as a definitive Hackintosh build, and you can find plenty of hardware that will run OS X using this or a similar method, but we're not going to dive into every possible option here. Instead, I've put together a list of the hardware I'm using and that I can guarantee runs like a dream, or at least it does for me. You can find links on Lifehacker, but as a quick overview, in my build I'm using this Antex Sonata 3 case with a 500 watt power supply, an Asus P7P55DE Pro motherboard, an EVGA GE Force 9500 video card, an Intel Core i7 2.8 GHz processor, four 2 GB sticks of RAM for a total of 8 GB, an OCZ Vertex series solid state drive, a second internal hard drive, and a DVD writer. In all, the subtotal on Newegg for all that hardware for me was $1,123.92. Skip the SSD and the second set of RAM, and you've still got a solid machine for $828.92. Once you've got all your hardware, you'll need to assemble your computer. Putting together the hardware for your Hackintosh is just like building any other computer from scratch. You mount the motherboard to your case, install your CPU, your RAM, graphics card, storage, and optical drive, and plug in all the necessary cables. It's always a good idea to read over your motherboard's instruction manual, but if you want a little more help, search Lifehacker for our first timer's guide to building a computer from scratch. The only thing you need to know is that you shouldn't plug your SATA drives into the off-white SATA ports at the bottom of the board. All the rest should work fine. Now for the software. On the software end of the spectrum, you'll need a few things. Apart from the obvious, the Snow Leopard install DVD, You'll need to download some files that contain the tools that will let you install OS X on your machine. The method I'm using to install OS X on our Hackintosh this time around is a new one by a guy called Tony Mac x 86 and it's really great. I've added direct links to the downloads in the post, but all credit goes to Tony Mac for the dead simple tools. Here's all the software you'll need. A Mac OS X 10.6 install DVD, which you can buy from Apple. A Mac OS X 10.6.4 combo update, also downloadable from Apple, iBoot from Tony Mac, MultiBeast also from Tony Mac, and a handful of other post-installation files which you can download from a link on Lifehacker. I'd suggest downloading everything you need now and putting MultiBeast, the Mac OS X combo update, and the post-installation files on a thumb drive. At this point, you should have assembled your PC and have all the software you'll need to install OS X on your Hackintosh. Now it's time for the fun, and surprisingly easy part. Install OS X on your Hackintosh. The process this time around is surprisingly simple, but I'll still walk you through the process step by step. Earlier I told you to download iBoot from Tony Mac. If you haven't already, unzip iBoot.zip and extract iBoot.iso. Now it's time to burn the file to a CD or DVD. It's actually just a small bootloader, so a CD will work just fine. In Windows, insert a blank disk, right-click iBoot.iso, and click Burn Disk Image. Select your disk burner in the next Windows prompt, and hit Burn. On OS X, insert a blank disk, right-click iBoot.iso, and click Burn iBoot.iso to disk. Burning the disk shouldn't take more than a minute or so, and iBoot should be ready to go. Step 2. Adjust your BIOS. Now that you've got the iBoot disk ready, it's time to turn on your soon-to-be Hackintosh and adjust the BIOS so your computer's OS X friendly. So make sure you've plugged in a keyboard, monitor, and power, and fire it up. When you get to the first boot screen, press the delete key to open up your BIOS. Once inside, you'll need to make a few adjustments. On the first BIOS screen, arrow down to the entry labeled Storage Configuration. Hit enter and change Configure SATA as to AHCI. Press escape once. Next, arrow over to the Advanced tab, then arrow down to the section labeled Onboard Devices Configuration. Hit enter 
find the Marvel 9123 SATA controller entry and set it to AHCI. Press Escape. Now arrow over to the power section and set suspend mode to S3 only. Finally, arrow over to the boot tab, hit enter on boot device priority and set your first boot device to boot from your DVD drive. Then set your second boot device as your primary hard drive. Hit F10 to save your changes and exit the BIOS. Boot from iBoot into the Snow Leopard install DVD. Assuming you set everything correct in your BIOS, iBoot should boot into this screen. When you get to this screen, eject your iBoot disk, insert the Snow Leopard install DVD, and press F5 on your keyboard. In a few seconds, the iBoot disk in the center should be replaced by a new disk labeled Mac OS X install DVD. Once it does, hit enter, and your computer will boot into the Snow Leopard installation wizard. Step 4. Format your disk. After a minute or two of loading up, you should be looking at the Snow Leopard installation wizard. Select your language and continue. Before we get started with the installation, however, you'll need to format your hard drive so you can install OS X. From the file menu at the top of the screen, select Utilities, Disk Utility. Once Disk Utility loads, click on your hard drive in the sidebar and select the tab labeled Partition. Set the volume scheme drop down to one partition, unless you have a reason for wanting otherwise. Name the volume whatever you want, and set the format to Mac OS Extended Journaled. Now click the Options button and ensure that GUID Partition Table is selected as the partition scheme. Now that everything's set, hit Apply. When you're prompted for confirmation, click Partition. In 20 seconds or so, your drive should be formatted and you'll be ready to install OS X. Quit Disk Utility and continue with the installer. The installation process from here is completely straightforward, so just follow along with the default settings. This time will vary, it always claims to take 30 plus minutes, but it's normally done in 10 or 20. When the installation finishes, you'll most likely see this install failed screen. Don't panic. This is all part of the process. Just click restart, put iBoot back in the drive, and this time when your computer restarts, iBoot's chameleon bootloader will give you the option to boot into your new installation. Select it with the arrow key and hit enter. Step 5. Update, but don't restart. The first time OS X loads, you'll see Snow Leopard's fancy welcome video. Once that's done, OS X will walk you through the setup wizard, during which you'll enter your username, location, and so on. Just follow along. Once you're finished with the setup, you're finally at your new Hackintosh desktop. Since you probably want to use the most up-to-date release of Snow Leopard, you'll want to update your Hackintosh before adding the finishing touches. Currently, Snow Leopard 10.6.4 is the newest release, so we want to update to that before we proceed. Plug in the thumb drive that you put the update combo installer on earlier, and double click the DMG file for the update combo and run the installer. When the combo update finishes, you'll be prompted to reboot. Don't reboot your computer yet. You've got a few things you need to do first. Step 6. Run the multi-beast package. Now it's time to open the multi-beast download that we grabbed before and should be on your thumb drive. This tool will allow you to boot from your hard drive going forward, so you don't need to use the iBoot disk every time you want to boot up OS X. On the Install Multi-Beast screen, tick the checkboxes next to Easy Beast and System Utilities, then click Continue. When the Easy Beast installation completes, eject the iBoot disk and restart your computer. Once you've rebooted, you've got one more step to go. Step 7. Copy custom kex to extra folder, manually add sound and ethernet kexts using kext utility. Now it's time to use those other files you downloaded earlier. So jump into the folder named post install and open the folder named extra extensions. In a separate finder window, navigate to the extra extensions folder on the root of your drive. In Finder, you can just type Command Shift G, type Extra slash Extensions, and press Enter. Now drag all the files from your thumb drive's extensions folder into your hard drive's extensions folder. Enter your password when prompted, and let Finder replace any files that already exist. Finally, navigate back to the post install folder on your thumb drive. Inside, you'll see three files 
an app named Kext Utility, and two Kext files named voodoohda.kext and realtech r 1000 slkext Drag and drop realtech r 1000 slkext onto Kext Utility, enter your password when prompted, and you'll see a window like this. Once it says done, you can quit Kext Utility, and then this time drag and drop voodoohda.kext onto Kext Utility. Basically, this installs custom audio and Ethernet extensions to your system so they'd work as you'd expect. Step 8. Restart and enjoy. Now that you've updated your computer and installed a few extensions customized to your hardware, you're ready to restart your computer, boot directly from your hard drive, and enjoy your new Hackintosh. Congratulations.